top misconception of the martial arts would be a black belt has to register their hands and feet as lethal weapons. They really believe, some people still today, this was more common decades ago, that when you got your black belt, you would go to the police station and fill out some forms and you would register your hands and your feet as deadly weapons. That's absurd. Hello, this is James Cox at The Martial Arts Lifestyle, and we are in episode number 52. Today in this episode, I want to just do a solo, short and simple to the point here to talk about misconceptions or myths, if you would, of the martial arts. And this is more what maybe the general public think about martial arts until they may learn. You know, lots of crazy things in the martial arts. I tell you, I've seen so much in near this four decades of training, teaching, competing and in martial arts, but it's like so many other things there's just misunderstandings i would say my first top pick of a misconception would be one style of martial arts is better than other another my style is better than your style this style of martial arts is absolute the best i could probably say yes to a lot of those and justify back up some reasons why this style is the better one or I could do the opposite and say no and justify and back up reasons why there's not a such thing. So let me kind of touch on all of that if this made any sense to you there. Is one martial arts style better than the others? I kind of go back to food, you know. Is one food better than the other? Is it Italian or Mexican or Asian or whatever? Well, is that personal preference? Yeah, that's personal preference. You might like Dr. Pepper better than Coke. You know, it's your preference and kind of what works for you, if you will. Now, martial arts style better than another uh, based on your goal and the purpose of why you're doing that. What's the outcome? What are you wanting to get out of it? And that's why you might choose a certain specific particular style. I will also say that there's not really, in my opinion, so let's get to this. There's not really a such thing as a bad martial art. But there's definitely, unfortunately, a such thing as a bad instructor of the martial arts. So is the martial arts style bad just because the one teaching it was bad? No, it didn't make the style bad. So you may go across town and find the same style. And this instructor is amazing. So let's go back to martial arts styles. What are you wanting to get out of it? You know, let's say you want to compete. You want to be an MMA fighter. You have a dream of going to the UFC. Well, you probably need to study uh, mixed martial art. You probably need to go to an MMA school and do Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Some wrestling, some heavy conditioning and fitness. You know, it wouldn't be good style for you to do Aikido or straight Shotokan, specifically and traditionally the way it was to prepare for cage fighting. You know, or maybe the other way around. Maybe your goal is just self-defense, uh, law enforcement, uh, prison guard, or just peace of mind that you can be around town and have a little more confidence and the fundamentals of protecting yourself. Maybe Krav Maga, maybe Kaji Kimbo, Kimpo, styles that put a little more emphasis on self-defense. So you got to find out what your goals are to start with. And then you look at which style might be best for you. But it doesn't mean that there's one style necessarily better than the other or there's a bad style. Along kind of with that, a lot of people will misunderstand and think that a great fighter, a legend, a celebrity martial artist makes a great instructor. That's not true either. That's definitely a myth. And I've seen that firsthand. I remember being very excited to go and train with legendary martial artists, celebrities, world champions and found out they're not very good instructors. They might know how to do it, they just don't know how to teach it. And you'll find the flip of that as well. People that really are good on articulating, communicating, they're passionate about you getting progress, doing all the little things right, but they may not be the best competitive fighter, you know. I'll just say do some research on your style and what you wanna get out of it. It's personal preference, find the right academy where you can tell that it's passion, it's about the art and the skill and the technique and go from there. A second um, misconception would be what you've seen a lot about the fake martial arts, no touch martial arts, death touch martial arts, dim mock, chi power, pressure point type things where you could touch someone one place one time and then they die 1 p.m. on Wednesday and you predict that and it happens. Or you've seen the fake martial arts where you can throw someone across the room, you can hurt someone, take the breath out of them, knock them down, whatever, without even touching them, just using your chief force and your power. 
although there are some there's some realness to some of those concepts and thoughts and philosophies of energy but dude you, you're not gonna not touch someone and hurt them it's just that's just craziness that people can buy into that and i think that's what happens when there's um, the secret death touch you know type no contact martial arts that's the real deal is people buy into it i mean i hate to say like a comparison with an extreme religion or even a divided politics where there's just so much belief and so much faith and you say it enough where you believe it and you, you buy into that, you know? I mean, if that was the case, you would see these guys as the world champions and they would never break a sweat and never touch the person. The bell would ring and across the ring or cage, they psh, throw their fireball and then the person passes out. But it's, it's not the case. Uh, number three, I would say a top misconception of mine is the thought of a black belt is the end you know you get your black belt and you're done and i hear it all the time a lot of it comes from the parents and this is what they've learned through society this is what they've learned through time is that you get your black belt you've reached the top it's like getting a degree and then you're done you quit it's over and now you have invincible power or you're a, you can beat everyone up and you can do all of these things because because you're a black belt well let me start by saying that a black belt is a great accomplishment. A lot of people do not make it there. You ever get your black belt in any martial arts style, you should be very proud of yourself because you set a goal, you accomplished it, you're rare for doing that, you get so much better. I think every year after I got my black belt, I got so much better than all those years before that. Even though I might be doing the same things, I'm doing them with a different mindset, with different experience, with different knowledge, and you just understand it better. I mean, you gotta do a lot of the same things over and over, put those hours and, and you know time and effort in it to get better at doing it. But it's definitely not the end. You know, you quit as a black belt. What are all the sayings that we've said, man? It's like giving dri getting driver's license, never driving. That's like getting a degree in college and never using it, which happens a lot, but you know, same with black belt. People quit when they get their black belt. And um, continuing and learning is going to do you so much more service, definitely, 100%. But I would say my next top misconception of the martial arts would be a black belt has to register their hands and feet as lethal weapons. They really believe, some people still today, this was more common decades ago, that when you got your black belt, I guess you would go to the police station. That's what this guy told me once. I believed. I was young, and I wasn't even doing martial arts then. You would go to the police station and fill out some forms and you would register your hands and your feet as deadly weapons. You know, they were legal now because if you got in a situation, there was a card, I would assume it's like a driver's license and you would present your card to the police or the attorney that you're okay now because your hands and feet were registered with the law as deadly weapons. That's absurd. There's no company, there's no govern, government, there's no, you know, entity that's handling and their job is to register people's hands and feet. Um, here's another one that I hear a lot. A misconception is the perfect age to start martial arts. Because you hear all the time, I'm too old to do martial arts. I'm too young to do martial arts. What is the perfect age to do martial arts? My first answer is now, because you can't go back. You're not going to be like, hey, now I'm 15. But the perfect age to start martial arts was eight, so I'm just not going to start now. You know, that is crazy, right? Or you're too old, you're 60, and you've always wanted to do martial arts, but you're too old now, so you're just not going to do it. If you want to do martial arts and you want to get the benefits and the value from it, then just start. There's no better time than now. Now is the time, right? It's the present. It's a gift. And live in that moment and just, just go do it. So martial arts, ages three and up, and to where the age where you're still able to do it to your level. You might have to limit some things. Maybe you're not doing burpees and lunges anymore, but you can do something and get something out of it. How about we kind of end this with, with something that that I said early on um, when, when I was beginning teaching and it's just, and I heard it somewhere. It may have been a Kaji Kimball thing where it was just shut up and train. And that sounds pretty harsh. I don't think I'm going to today in, in 2023, look out at a group of 30 kids and their parents all watching me and say, all right, guys, shut up and train. But it's the philosophy behind that. Like, don't worry about all these other things, you know, 
the politics, the style, the belt, the age, you know, the secret techniques, just train. You got to get out there and you got to do it. So if you just shut up and train, you're there for the right reason. You're going to get more out of it. That's it. Shut up and train. So you guys find a good martial arts school or come to mine. I'm ready for you. Stay with us. Go back and listen to the previous episodes and uh, share them and like them and comment on them and stay engaged. And maybe shoot me some messages on some things that you would like to hear. So that's our podcast as well as our YouTube channel at James Cox Martial Arts. Thank you. Appreciate it.